Hey everyone, this is three questions with Kelly Croy. There we go. I got it. I got it asked right before. Hey everyone, I'm so excited to have Kelly on the podcast. I've actually been on your podcast before. It was a while ago, though. Absolutely, babe. we want to have you back too. Yeah, oh, oh for sure. I, I'm looking forward to be back. And Kelly, I've known for a long time. He has the Wired Educator podcast, which I've had the pleasure to be on. But I know a lot of people listen to. A lot of people connect. Uh, he also has uh, a new children's book that he said he told me before that he wrote with his dog. <laughs> That's right? true. And I would actually think, you know, if I wrote something with my dog, it actually probably would make more sense than the stuff I just write on my own. So yeah. uh, so it is called Unthink Before Bed. So can you just tell everyone a little bit about uh, your new your new children's book and, and what it's yeah. about? Absolutely. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm an overthinker and I'm a, I'm a person who deals with some anxiety. And unfortunately, um, some of my daughters, I have four daughters, they have exhibited signs of, mm -hmm. of uh, unrest and anxiety. And so uh, during quarantine, uh, my dog and I came up with this great idea to write and illustrate a children's book. What if we could help kids deal with that overthinking uh, through a children's book every night? They kind of mm -hmm. practice these routines. And so I have kind of 10 little lessons in this book, Unthink Before Bed, uh, to help people deal with tomorrow and uh, why tomorrow is going to be a great day and how we can get ready for it before we go to bed and what we do, what do we do with an overworked mind? And so, uh, the second part is I did everything on an iPad. I drew every picture. I wrote every line on an iPad because I want people to understand that devices be used for creating. So if you're a teacher out there or an administrator and you're thinking you have a book idea, that's what we do with devices. And we model okay. that for kids. And so that's that's my book. I so love I'm excited it. excited about it. I love it. I, you know, I, I've talked about my own anxiety for a for, um, long, long time. And I think... Uh, one of the things that I've started doing, this is actually pretty recent. I literally just wrote about it like right before I started recording this podcast. Like, like it's not even, it's not out yet. Okay. But one of the, one of the things I talked about was similar to what you said is that really kind of starting off by visualizing my day ahead. Exactly. And it actually um, has really, it's helped me kind of, um, kind of like what will like a successful day look like. And um, I think it's it's you know you always deal with unknowns during a day but you can you're kind of setting yourself up for you know success in that way and um i i, I love it i love the idea i love the topic and so where can people find that book kelly uh you can find it on books a million uh barnes and noble and but my favorite place is amazon because it, it's really fast and delivered to you right. and um i've gone to schools and, and spoken and read the book and i bring my dog and uh, we've had love some it. fun with that yeah. yeah even even better anytime you bring dogs in <laughs> so hey anyone, anyone interested yeah just check out in uh the links down below in the description and yeah i'm, I'm glad you got to share that so well thank uh, you kelly is also the director of innovation for P port clinton schools you've been teaching for a long, long time and i know you know i've talked to you quite a bit i know you've had a lot of educators on your own podcast and so when you actually think of a, a, a teacher in your lifetime, whether it's as a colleague, um, whether it's as a student, who's someone that really inspired you and why? Yeah, that's a really hard question to answer because we've all had so many great educators. But one that comes to mind is a, a teacher from high school called Jeff Jack. And uh, Mr. Jack was the kind of teacher who made class fun. And uh, I think that's really important. I, I think some teachers, uh, at least when I started becoming a teacher early on, uh, I was always cautioned. Well, don't have too much fun with the right. kids. And I, I thought, man, that's crazy. You know, I want to have fun with the kids. I want to want to have fun. And Mr. Jack understood that. And um, he made class exciting. I couldn't wait to get to his class. And so I knew when I was going to go into education, I wanted to have a classroom that kids couldn't wait to get into. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's just being real with them. He, he talked to us like we were adults. He listened to what our issues were and he related it to what he was trying to teach. And so, uh, I've tried to include as much of that into my classroom as I could. He's a good guy. I love it. We're going to yeah. give him a shout out to Jeff Jeff. There we go. So the, uh, one of the things, well, I, I think there is always that little fine line, right? Like, cause I know I've seen teachers in my lifetime. I'm not going to lie to you who were like the most fun teacher ever, but not much was happening, you know, on right. the learning side. Right. Um, but the one thing that you said that, I was talking about this with a group, I think it was just yesterday, and they were talking about like, hey, what are some ways you connect with kids? I'm like, just talk to them, right? Because I think yeah. we're always looking for these like crazy icebreaker activities and stuff like that. And, you know, as an adult, and it's kind of going back to the notion of anxiety, 
as soon as you put me in a situation where I'm doing something really that I don't know I'm uncomfortable with, it is actually doing way more harm to me than it is good. Right. Like oh, I, don't, I, just, I would just rather just talk. Right. And like give people that opportunity. And so I think that it's like, why do we over complicate that stuff? Right. Like a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people will do icebreakers and they're like, I know you hate icebreakers, but we're going to do one anyway. I'm like, well, right. everyone hates them. Why are we doing them still? Right. right. I'm with you. Just, just give us time to like, and I, I'm not saying if you do icebreakers, you hate kids or anything like that. But, <laughs> but the, but the idea is that I think sometimes, like I said, we, we over complicate stuff. And I think just, you know, building authentic, you know, connections, just having conversations, you know, I think that's one of the best ways to build relationships, connect with your students and they get to know you. So I, I absolutely love that advice. So I know you've interviewed a ton of administrators and you're, you know, currently one yourself, a director of innovation. So when you think of an administrator who like really made an impact on you, someone who really inspired you, who do you think of and why? That That's really hard. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit of time to answer this, George. So I, right now, this really sounds like a bad answer. I'm going to go with my boss, my superintendent, Pat Atkins. Why is that I, a bad I, answer? Because <laughs> it's, it's a suck up it, answer. Yeah, it, it, sound, it sounds that's like right. it. But I'll tell you why. Um, for 26 years, I was in the classroom. And I think there is a moat being dug between mm. uh, teachers and administrators. And I think that that moat is being dug everywhere. You know, like a moat around a oh, camera, yeah. right? Oh. And the way that that moat gets filled in is with every conversation that we have. And I know I was guilty as a teacher. I did not understand the roles and and how helpful administrators were to a teacher. I never invested the time to understand that. I only looked at it from my point of view. Right. And now um, I'm not an evaluator of, of educators, which I love, but I see how hard administrators work. And I see, you know, I wrote a book on leadership, Along Came a Leader, but I never had an administrative role, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I need to do a follow-up to that because now it's easy to it's easy to make commentary about you know, what principals do and what superintendents do and what curriculum mm -hmm. directors do and things like that until you've had to try to, to work and lead professional learning uh, with a group of teachers. And, and you've had to try to uh, uh, start a new initiative. And, you know, there, it's difficult. And it is you've often probably heard that administration is lonely. The thing I like about my current boss, Pat Atkins, is he has a really a team approach to things. He likes to surround himself with others. He really listens to the voices of other people. And he really gets into the classrooms and has those conversations with teachers and other administrators. And he doesn't act as the sole, I'm the mm -hmm. leader of the whole district kind of approach. Uh, he approaches everything with a team concept. And that's, that's something I really admire about him. And I think I, it, the, to the teachers listening to your podcast right now, have some empathy for administrators and try to view what their what their roles and responsibilities are in the district. And when you judge something as like, ah, they're just creating more problems for me, try to look at it a little bit bigger and say, you know, what what are they really trying to do? Because they're not. Right. We're all on the same team. And so uh, that's that's my answer. Yeah. Let's give it Pat Atkinson a shout out. Kelly's getting a raise after that one. So well, <laughs> my hey, evaluation is coming up. So yeah, <laughs> smart, yeah. smart idea. The uh <laughs> Well, you know, actually, I like I, I appreciate that you sharing that because when we were talking before the podcast, you were saying like, you know, how long you've been in education and you still love it, right? Yeah, and I love it. And typically, let's say if you have a bad administrator, we don't love it as much as we could, right? Yeah. And I think that can make an impact. So obviously, um, leadership matters there. The the thing that you said, um, it, it really struck a chord with me because I, I get really frustrated when I, I watch teachers go, oh, principal should do this and this and this. And I also watch like, don't tell me how to do my job. You've never done my job before. Right. And, and it's like, wait a minute. Have you been a, like, if, are you talking about doing a job that you've never done before, but complaining when people tell you how to do your job, who've never done a new job before. Right. right. So now it's not, but it's not saying that it doesn't matter their opinion. Right. So there's a very difference between you should be doing this versus, Hey, this would be really helpful. Here's something that, you know, maybe could, is there like a possibility here? And you kind of bridging, as you said, that moat. And yeah. kind of connecting that way. I'm not saying don't say anything, but as you said, there's that empathy and understanding that the role is different, right? Because like yeah. one one of the things, like I was talking to a principal the other day, and a lot of times we have conversations about like, well, principals need to be in classrooms this many times, and that's usually coming from teachers understanding that. Mm -hmm. But there's there's so many different elements of the job where you can't necessarily do that. And to be honest, with you I was in a role of assistant principal, and I would teach at the same time. 
And I knew as an assistant principal, the kids in my classroom did not get a, a like a, a totally attentive teacher because my responsibility was a whole school. So if something was going on, I had to deal with it. And so it's yeah. not just that you don't like, I understand why people want that. They want, cause you want to understand the role, but you also have to think like, does this actually benefit kids to have someone in this space who might have to like, you know, yeah. say like, Hey, you're on your own kids. I'm like, I got to go right. right to the office for this thing too. So I think, you know, as you, as you said, having an empathy, empathy, you know, talking about Pat, having those conversations and talking mm -hmm. about and then bridging and, and having understanding. Cause I, I think, yeah, I definitely think administrators can lose touch from what the classroom reality is. And so I understand, but it's like, how do you approach that conversation? Because as like, just like teachers, they don't want to be told what to do by people who have never taught. And I think the same is sometimes is true. It's like, right. we should understand the positions better and, you know, maybe, Hey, here's some things that might help. Is there a way we can actually like taking that team approach? So I absolutely love that. So Kelly, you told me you've been in education. How long is, is it 30 plus I, years? I just finished my 31st year. 31st year. I, I love get, it. Like, I'm trying to like, maybe I give you a <laughs> 31st year. Right? And you said, and this is like, we're recording this in 2022. And you said you love it more than ever, which is like, I do. And the, 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 this is you. a hard year. I, and right. I, you know, for me to say, I love education as much as I ever had. At first, it sounds like I'm not sympathetic and, mm -hmm. and shown empathy to what a hard year this was. Right. I'm on social media. I'm on Twitter. I, I understand firsthand the struggle. It's been a hard year for me as well. Yeah. You know, um, it's, it is hard for administrators. It's, it's hard for teachers. But I also think, and I, you know, you might give me a boo on this one. I think sometimes we have, we have the greatest control of what we want to talk about. Yep. And, and I think right now there is a, almost a celebratory narrative of how hard things are, you know, and I think we've got to change that conversation. I know this, it's 2022 and teachers are still making a difference in the kid in kids' yep. lives. And, and, uh, I don't know of another profession that, uh, maybe, maybe medical profession, but teachers really do get to hear from kids. Uh, I've been to yep. commencement speeches for college, for high school. Uh, went to one for middle school the other day, and I hear kids talk about how teachers and administrators are changing their lives. And mm -hmm. that needs to be at the forefront of our conversation. There's always going to be problems in education. There always have been. And, and some of them are very similar. And we have to have the conversation about the tough things going on. But we yeah. also have to acknowledge there's a lot of good, man. Like there is just I, I just love education. I love the opportunity to see kids uh, grow. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble yeah. with you. I'm going to get in trouble with you on this too. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I agree with you. What some of that stuff I'm seeing. And it's to the point where I, I believe this. And I've had conversations that some people are like, I'm actually, I'm really enjoying this. I don't want to say anything. Cause I'm going to get basically yeah. like crapped on for saying right. that the year has been good for me. And yeah. it's like, what kind of situation are we actually creating mm -hmm. in any facet of the world where people are struggling to say things aren't like, and I'm not saying yeah. there's, like, I, like, as you said, it's not that there's no negative things that are happening and it's not that, but I'm always, and maybe I'm an optimist. The idea is that, yeah, there's issues. How do we move forward? How do we get better from it? Not just let's dwell in the crap, right? Let's just sit in that tune. Like I have those things in my life as does anybody, but like constantly focusing on what is negative doesn't get you out of it. I think it, right. it can make it even worse. So I, I appreciate you saying that. I thought, you know, if you're in trouble, <laughs> right? Because right. I, I, like I am talking for a lot of people that are terrified to say stuff, right? They're like, yeah. hey, like I actually remember one teacher that I know, I'm not going to say his name, saying like, I feel bad, but I've, I'm having a really good year. And it's yeah. like, he feels guilty for that, right? And it's like, well, partly I'm, I know him well enough that I know he's also finding a way to make it that way. And it's like, I feel a lot of times we give control to other people to make stuff for us. Whereas I'm like, Oh, I have a lot more control than I pretend sometimes. Right. I, like I, I don't trust me. I've been in that negative spiral myself too. And I know it can get, I, I, I'm not saying this cause I'm judging other people. I'm judging my own experience of the past of where I can just kind of like get worse and worse on my own because I just feel like there's no way out and you can, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So all the years that you've been in education, 30 plus, if you can go back, to your first year teacher self, what advice would you give to first year teacher Kelly? You know, um, I've been blessed to be 
surrounded by great educators my entire career now and in my first year. Anything good that I did in the classroom probably was someone else's idea first that I just kind of modified it and made my own. I think the biggest advice that I would give myself is just the grace to not overthink things, mm -hmm. to, to slow down. It's that your teaching career is actually going to go very quickly and to enjoy, enjoy the students, enjoy learning, enjoy um, the failure of a lesson and, and what you can learn from it and be really open to uh, what other people are doing. I think uh, social media for educators in, in most ways has been so incredibly awesome because there's mm -hmm. been such a great sharing of wonderful ideas and resources like never before. I didn't have that drinking fountain when I was first right. started teaching, you know, and now you can get online and just uh, be inspired so quickly. Um, but I think early on, I tried to do too much. And, um, and I think we just got to, you just got to kind of pace yourself and, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to get better each year. It's just, it's, it's more of a gradual, I call it permanent beta. I think, um, you know, we know, we know, we know there's going to be a new iPhone, right? I don't have to get a hundred percent better between now and next year. I just got to get a, a small percentage better. And uh, that's what I'd probably tell myself. Um, did, did, did you yeah. like, this is, this is like, you know, I'm what, 23 years into the profession. And do you remember, is this, I don't know if it's me. So like 30 years is like a typical career in Canada. I don't know. Like it's 30 yeah. years. I remember like <laughs> 30 years. Like, yeah. And I just, I remember that it feels like it was yesterday. Like it, it does go by quick. Hey, I don't feel like I've been in education for 31 years. I even kind of hate saying it, you know, cause it just right. seems like a really long time. Um, people say oh, I'm a lifelong learner. Like everybody's going to who's not going to say they're a lifelong learner, but I, I always feel like the next year is going to be the best year. And right now okay. I believe that 2022, 23, 2023 is going to be the best school year of my career. And I can honestly say I've thought that every okay. year, you know, I think that's the approach, you know, so. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and Hey, Kelly, I, I, first of all, thanks for taking your time. And I actually like that. You, you know, you talked about kind of overthinking at the beginning of your career and then you write a book oh. called under things. So again, check it out in the links down below. Now, Kelly, uh, I told Kelly this before. Um, a lot of you know that, you know, because I schedule all these posts, this, uh, these, these podcasts, this is my, uh, I live in a, I live somewhere else now. So this is actually my officially last recorded podcast in this room. So I appreciate <laughs> having right. you on yes. and you got, I don't know if I should send you like a hat or a t-shirt or something like <laughs> Absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yeah. This is the last time uh, I'll have the brick behind me uh, in the background. So Kelly, great. thanks so much for, for uh, taking the time out of your day to be with me. And I, I wish you the best. And I hope to cross paths with you in uh, Ohio very soon, right? Go the Ohio state, right? And the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's an honor and a privilege, George. Thank you so much for having me on hey, the show. Thanks, my friend. And hey, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. There we go. Take care, everybody.